Hi everyone! This is another talky video, I hope you don't mind, but Popular Urbanum has challenged me to a tag in which we discuss the historical context and documentation behind the favorite item of our reenactment kits. I'm sure you're all expecting me to discuss my supportive ships, which I tend to distress at any opportunity. However, this is an item that is far more dear to me, and I think you'll understand why in a bit. But before we discuss this hood, let's talk about my grandma. My grandmother is the person who taught me how to sew. Well, my grandmother and my mother. It was originally planned that Mimi would be the one who taught me how to sew everything because that's what she had done with my older sister. However, when I was in third grade, after a long fight with leukemia, my grandmother passed away. And my mom, as the only daughter and the only one who had learned how to sew in her generation, inherited all of my grandmother's sewing supplies. For a very long time after her passing, they sort of just sat in our spare room untouched. That is, until I decided to join the SCA. Once I had done that, my mom and I went into the sewing room and together we made my first bit of garb for the SCA. I don't wear it anymore, but I still have it because, I mean, I made that with my mom. <laughs> I can't just get rid of that. And that's something you sort of run into fairly often when you join the SCA. You have pieces of kit that aren't necessarily perfect for your time period, nor are they historical whatsoever sometimes, but because they're from friends or loved ones, you keep them because they're dear to you. I have so many items like this. I have rings. Actually, no, my rings are perfect. Martin, your rings are perfect for me. <laughs> but I have a circlet from when I received my AOA that because the king and queen didn't have any to spare when I was getting the award, my friend Eleonora came up and presented me with hers. I have a pouch that it's not very fancy, and it's not historical whatsoever. It's chrome leather, it's riveted instead of stitched, but it was presented to me from the king after I had walked like three miles to the event site. Walked, and this was my first event in Nantes Deora. And then there's this fabric. My grandmother picked up this fabric 30 years ago when my mom was pregnant with my older sister and she was living in Scotland at the time. This isn't fabric I can just buy more of. I don't know what mill it's from, I don't know if it's even in production anymore, but it's wool that my grandmother bought and laundered and never found that perfect project for. This year, when my mom was talking about wanting a tartan skirt to show her Scottish dogs in, I finally found that perfect project. And for Christmas, I gave my mom that skirt. But I still had more of it. And so I got this idea of why not get a little bit of my grandmother in all of our wardrobes. And that's where this hood came. For Christmas, my parents gave me Medieval Garments Reconstructed, which is a lovely book. I have that and a sister. And I decided I would make a hood out of it. Now, this hood is perfect for the 14th century, as we know, but most of the documentation for women's hoods were t tend to be open-fronted or buttoning in the front. So this is very clearly a men's style of hood. However, I really like the style and I wanted something that just would keep my head warm during winter because I have the habit of 
wearing my historical clothing in daily life and the wind is awful in Texas. The wind and rain is awful in Texas. And I realized while I was filming the Wanderer video and was out in the middle of the night in pouring rain that I really needed a hood. So this hood isn't perfect for my impression whatsoever because it's a men's hood and I am not a man. And when it comes to plaid and garments, I typically see them on party color garments. But I think the sentimental value of the fabric itself was more important than being able to be documented. Editing Faye here, I was looking up some visual sources for hoods while I was editing this, and I did find what looked to be possible closed fronted hoods on women in manuscript depictions as well as some totally plaid garments. So take what I say here with a grain of salt, I just hadn't seen it while I was doing the filming for this. And the lining itself isn't just random fabric that I had in my stash either. Each scrap of this fabric that I used in the lining is from an old project, some of which you've seen, some of which you haven't. The blue is from my linen Viking Age tunic, which I mainly use as an under tunic now. The gray wool around the opening of the front is the fashion fabric for a boxed and man tunic I sewed for my friend Logan, who some of you would know as Arm the Armor on Tumblr and Instagram. He needs to send me photos of this cloak because I sewed it for him two years ago and he still hasn't sent me any, but I still have scraps and I used up the last of it for this facing. The cream linen is from my Gotland's kit remake and then the white is from my supportive shift. Every piece of fabric in this hood, although not perfectly documentable and not quite fitting my context, has huge sentimental value to me. And that's really why this is my favorite hood. It's not quite finished yet. I still haven't hemmed it. So yeah, sometimes things aren't necessarily perfect for your kit, but you keep them around because they have huge emotional value to you. This hood is not just going to be useful for reenactment. It's going to be useful in my daily life. And I have something of my grandmother's that I get to wear in reenactment, which not everyone can say. And now I just need to find the perfect project to use the last of it to make something for my sister and my brother. Well, two things. <laughs> so there we have it, my favorite thing. <laughs> to continue this tag, I will be tagging Daisy Victoria to talk about her favorite thing in her reenactment kit, and I'll see you next month.